Okay, in this video we're going to walk through getting OP25 up and running in a virtual machine uh, running Ubuntu. And uh, if you're not familiar with OP25, it, it's a piece of software that uh, piggybacks off of a GNU radio and uh, it allows you to monitor uh, P25 systems. It does both phase one and phase two utilizing uh, uh, RTL SDRs and uh, the audio quality on it is pretty much unmatched at this point uh, when you compare it to like DSD Plus and uh, any of the other packages out there that uh, decode P25 audio. So we're going to walk through getting that set up in a VM. Um, it um, actually runs pretty decently for me in a VM. The audio can stutter just a little bit but it's honestly not that bad. Uh, it can be a little bit uh, intimidating getting this set up because it is Linux and a lot of people are not familiar with that but especially when you're working with Ubuntu uh, like this it makes uh, life a whole lot easier for us so we're gonna run through everything uh, I'll run through the steps of installing it and then I'll actually uh, stop that and then just copy back my uh, known working install back to it but uh, I'm gonna walk through all the different steps to actually get it up and running and a couple of the uh, the gotchas that got me and uh, then also talk about the um, the they calling they call them TSVs tab separated uh, value worksheets it's very similar to CSVs except instead of a comma it uses tabs and uh, we'll walk through making sure that you create those properly through uh, LibreOffice so anyway let's get started so I have my Ubuntu desktop here and uh, this is just a plain install of Ubuntu. I'm using 14.04 because that is the long-term service release and you shouldn't have any problems being able to use that now and for the foreseeable future. So we'll stay with that one for right now. And uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is run my terminal window and we're going to uh, we're going to walk through every step, but uh, some of these, again, are going to say that uh, they're already installed, but we'll walk through them anyway. So, first thing is we're going to sudo apt-get install uh, git. Let's ask for my password. If uh, it hadn't already been installed, it would have installed, which is fine. And just to follow all the steps, we'll go ahead and do an update. Okay, so I'm already in my root directory, so I'm going to um, well, we'll do that anyway. So that just takes me back to my directory. So if you can see here, I actually have the the pi bomb stuff already in here in my target directory. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change to my desktop, and uh, I'm going to run everything from there. So I'm going to do the git clone. So we're all good there. So we're going to CD into Pi Bombs. Okay, I'm actually going to go ahead and um, type the fun command now. So we're going to go Pi Bombs install GNU Radio. And then we're just going to keep all the defaults. All the defaults should be just fine for us. And now it's off. Now this is going to take a long time to finish because what it's actually doing is it's it's downloading uh, binary packages for some things, but there are some things in this that are set to, no matter what, compile from source. And so, uh, and one of the main thing that it does build is a GNU radio, and that takes quite a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, with the magic of video editing, just stop this and well, I'll get uh, my other options moved back to uh, where they were. And we'll run everything. Like I said, we'll run through everything and make sure that everything is up and running. So I'm going to go ahead and kill this. Okay, so now we are back. And uh, you can see I have my two folders from before. I have the Pi Bombs folder and I have the Target folder. Now, one of the things that I ran into in my virtual machine was... Um, 
I was getting some errors when I tried to run GNU Radio and uh, anything else to do with uh, the OP25 project, saying that it could not actually grab my uh, RTL SDR device. So um, a user on the forum uh, whose name is Mike, his handle is mtendor, uh, he actually figured out that for some reason um, some some files were not getting copied uh, where they needed to. So we're going to run through that real quick. So he said um, that the it was the rtl-sdr.rules file was not getting copied into the udev rules.d folder. So we'll just run the copy command on that real quick. So we run copy. And we want to copy out of the PyBombs folder. No, that's my bad. It should be. I should change my desktop. There we go. So we're going to copy that out of the PyBombs folder. SRC, RTL SDR, and then RTL SDR that rules. We're going to copy those into slash etc slash udev and then rules.d. So you just copy those over, and I should have mentioned to run that as sudo so that you don't get that access denied error. And now that we've got that there, we can uh, we can then move on to getting uh, everything else running. So Okay, now that all that is installed, uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is... Um, run the command to generate your environment variable. And so to do that, we go into the PyBombs folder and we type slash PyBombs env and hit enter. And you can see that it actually uh, chose this prefix for the file. So it's actually just created a file in the target folder, which is right here. So we'll back out of this folder and go into the target folder. And this is uh, also something that tripped me up at one point, is uh, you type source, and then I was just trying to pass it the file that it created, which is the setup underscore env.sh. That does not work. You actually need to uh, give it the full path to that file, which you can actually do very easily if you're already in there and just put the dot on it and then type that. And when you hit enter, it does it. It doesn't give you any fuss about it. You're good. So now let's back back out of this folder and get back into the PyBombs folder. And uh, we're going to run one more command, and that's uh, very similar to installing uh, GNU Radio. We do uh, slash PyBombs install GROP25, and you would hit enter here and let it go. And all all that will download get itself set up everything will be rare and to go i'm not going to do it though because i already have it uh, up and running so let's get into the uh, fun stuff so what we're going to go ahead and do now is plug in our uh, rtl device so i'll plug in my first one here and it is now plugged in and uh, what we're going to do is um if you've never played around with GNU Radio before, it's a really awesome, powerful program where you can actually design all kinds of things in it. You can add all kinds of filters, modulators, demodulators, you name it, you can do it. Really cool stuff. But um, the OP25 right now doesn't really work with the, uh, the main GNU Radio program, the uh, GNU Radio Companion. It has its own... Um, has its own script, its own Python script that it runs and um, starts and uh, we'll, we're gonna go take a look at the options to uh, get that running. So one of the things we need to do is we're already in our PyBombs folder which is where we want to be and so we're gonna change to the source folder and if you look in here we have uh, gr-op25 we're gonna go into that folder and once again, we have another folder, OP25. We're going to change into that one. And then we have this folder here, the gr 25 OP25 underscore repeater. we go into that one. If you're wondering what I'm hitting to autocomplete that, uh, you just have to hit tab. Um, that's just a, a handy shortcut for um, 
getting around in your, your shell. So we look in here, we've got a folder called apps. We'll go into that folder. And this is where all the good stuff is. So you can see we have scope.py. That's um that's the um meat of um of the program right now that we're gonna be playing with. And uh, if you notice, I've got some um, some other folders in here. The uh, TSV files I was talking about, those tab separated values files. And uh, I have some backup copies from me experimenting and trying different things and trying to get it to work and all that. So, um, but one of the other files I have in here is this, the scope.sh that uh, does not come with the uh, distribution itself. It's something I made so that I can easily remember what my, the command line options were that uh, I've been using. So let's go ahead and um, open up a text editor. And I'm gonna open up that sh file so we can take a look at it. So I'll go through all those folders again. src, five, repeater, apps. And let's take a look at what we've got here. So let's bring that out. So I have a, first I'm calling the scope py Python file. I'm telling it I want to pass it some arguments, I'm telling it I want to use RTL device zero, which means use the first one. The uh, next option is uh, gains and uh, I'm just gonna. I left this at the uh, defaults that I found on um, on the radio reference forum topic on this. So um, so dash in lna colon forty six, and then you have dash f for uh, what frequency you would like to start on, and then we have our sample rate. Uh, here's my old favorite: two point oh four eight million samples per second. Your dash q is your ppm correction value. Your dash V means uh, your vocoder. So what voice codec we're going to be using, we're just going to pass it that and tell it that we're, we want to listen for voice. And then uh, we tell it, uh, I actually have mine set up already to do trunking. And so I pointed it to a trunk.tsv file. And so let's take a look at that file real quick. So I'm going to open LibreOffice Calc, which is very similar to Microsoft Office uh, Excel. And so let's go open that particular file. So let's get into PyBombs. You're going to learn these folders really quickly because <laughs> you keep having to go back into them so many times. <coughs> okay, so trunk.tsv wrong here okay so you saw what I had to do to change that there it was uh, stuck on a non UTF Unicode which I'm not sure why it tried to default to that because that's not what I've been using at all but uh, we're gonna change the character set to Unicode UTF-8 uh, make sure that the tab option here is checked and then also make sure that quoted field is text is checked and then we hit OK and then so we see we've got just a simple, <clears throat> very similar to if you were open a CSV in Excel, uh, TSV is no different. And so we have a bunch of different columns here. And so we have system name, which uh, you can make that anything you want. We have control channel list, so you can uh, specify the main and alternate control channels for your trunk system. Uh, your offset, uh, I just lift that at zero. Uh, your NAC on the system, which uh, you should be able to find on Radio Reference, or if you uh, run Unitrunker and all that on the um, on the site, uh, you should be able to find that quite easily. Uh, your modulation type, and then uh, your top groups uh, file. So you can see that it's calling a different file than uh, the trunk TSV that we're in right now. Trunk TSV, you can see it up there. So it calls a file called topgroups.tsv. And again, it's just a very simple tab separated value sheet. We'll look at it in just a second. Uh, and then you see here we have a whitelist and back blacklist. You can actually uh, create more TSV files. And uh, so the whitelist works in that it, um, it will not 
try to lock on to any talk group except those in the whitelist. So if it sees something that it doesn't know, you will never hear it. Uh, I wouldn't recommend going that route. I would recommend going the blacklist route and uh, putting in there anything that you're either A, not interested in hearing, or B, you know is encrypted and don't want to hear all the uh, gobbledygook. And then your center frequency is an interesting um, option. So when you're, um, when you're tuned in to your control channel frequency or, or even um, just nearby the control channel frequency, what you, uh, what's really helpful to do is uh, you take a look at your entire system. So um, your entire trunk system. So from your control channels to your alternate channels to your voice channels and you get the range of all those frequencies so you take your highest frequency say it's um, 70, 774.1 megahertz that's your highest frequency and then your lowest frequency in the system is just out of sake of ease 77.3.1 and so you take those you subtract the smaller from the larger, you divide by two, and then you add that number to your lowest frequency. And basically what you're doing is setting the, um, setting the RTL device to right there in the middle of all the frequencies that it's going to need to tune to. And based on your sample rate, it's actually able to continuously watch all those nearby channels and automatically switch to a particular voice channel that has a particular traffic on it while still watching the control channel. It's a really interesting stuff. And so that's what the center frequency is used for. I don't have it entered in right now. I probably should, but I don't. And then uh, you can see I have a second system on here which uh, with a different NAC. Using the same talk group file though because they, they do share those uh, talk group values. So let's take a look at this talk group CSV file. So again, let me just open it up in here. Talk group .tsv. Again, make sure we're on UTF-8, tabbed, quoted. Okay. And you can see I've got, this, this is set up a little bit differently in that it does not have the header rows. And so I just know column one should be the talk group ID in decimal format. And then Column two should be my uh, tag, my alpha tag. And so that's easy enough to see in here. You can see there is a ton of stuff on here. And this was all grabbed from a radio reference. And it just, I exported it as a CSV, deleted the stuff that I didn't need, deleted those header rows. And uh, now let me walk you through saving these files because that's where it actually gets kind of tricky. So let's switch back over to uh, my trunk.tsv file. And I'm gonna save it as a different name so it doesn't uh, override it and I just don't wanna mess anything else up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go file, save as, and in the make sure you're already in the same folder. I'm just gonna call this trunk2. And what I wanna do is after, again, making sure I'm in the right folder, I've got my name there, trunk2. And I'm going to scroll, I hit the file type drop down, and I'm going to scroll all the way down here to text CSV. And then I'm also going to tick this box, edit filter settings. So I have all that checked. And now I hit save. And it's going to ask, uh, are you sure you want to save it as this? It's not really an open document format. So yes, we want to use the text CSV. And again, so we're going to do a Unicode UTF-8 just like we did when we opened it. Now on field delimiter, we're going to do the drop down and we're going to change that to tab. And then leave everything else the same and then check this option as well. Quote all text cells. And then we hit OK. And let's go take a look at that file that we just created. So if I take a look in here, I see we now have a trunk2.csv, which is the wrong file format, because it's not comma, it's tab. So what we can do is we can go ahead and tell that to um, rename it, and we'll use the uh, move command to just rename that. So we'll do mv trunk2.csv, and then we'll change that to trunk2.tsv. 
So all we're doing is changing the extension using the uh, move command. So we do that. We take a look again, and we see we have trunk2.tsv. Now, if we were to take a look at that in just the uh, in the nano text editor, we'd see that there's nothing particularly special about it. It has all the text that we entered in. It put quotes around everything for us, which is exactly what we need. And then you see there's tabs in between everything. And this is a perfect format to see. And you see it doesn't quite line up that great in here because some because this line is a little bit too long for that first tab, but that won't matter to the program. It's looking for the tabs themselves. It's not looking to see to make sure that everything lines up properly. And so let me just close that out. And again, remember make sure that you actually use your trunk.tsv file. And I can actually open that one up and show you that it is indeed the exact same as the other one we were just looking at. So trunk TSV. And then uh, so you would run through that same process to save the talk group CSV file. And so let's take a look at what that looks like in Nano. And so again, the even less frills here. You have one column of decimal IDs and then one column of your alpha tags and there's just a tab in between every single one of those Easy enough, so we'll close back out of that We'll minimize these guys And let's go back to our uh, command line that we would that we're going to be running to um, monitor a p25 system So we we ran through what uh, the trunk file does and what that looks like and then we ran through the talk group stuff and then the final parameter here the dash 2 that's to actually tell it to enable uh, phase 2 TDMA decoding uh, like I said that's one of the big benefits of using OP25 is, is right now it is currently the only one that can decode phase 2 P25 and uh, that's where my interest was peaked into getting to know how to run this so okay what we're gonna go ahead and do now is a uh, run um, the command line just like I have it down here and uh, we're gonna see what we get now we may have to run this a couple times I've seen it uh, try to error out on me and I, I assume it's because I'm in a VM and I'm doing some really funny things so let's see what happens when I try and run it let's see it found everything it needs to do okay it popped right up which is fine and I can see that I really don't have a good spike right here right now so I'm gonna adjust my reference level down and I'm gonna turn my gain up here and so I'm not gonna mess with the fine-tuning right now hopefully shouldn't have to one of the things I can go check is uh, my constellation and I'll change that to differential and I can see that it's not as tight as I would want it to be and that may be because uh, the chip cooled back down so I'm gonna let that uh, keep running for a minute and uh, we'll We'll take a look back here in just a second. I'll probably skip forward in the video once it uh, starts showing some more. Um, before I entered the complex, I was going to make a crack down with it. Uh, it's back down the garden. Uh, and so. I'm sure you heard the audio start, and uh, it's a little bit choppy right now, and I'm going to go ahead and chalk that up to the uh, chip having cooled down. So, like I said, we're just going to let this keep running for a second and see what we can't get here. Let's see if messing with my fine tuning helps a little bit right now. I think that made it worse. Eh, it's not really helping right now, so I'll just put it back to zero. And you can see as it scrolls across, we're actually getting TDMA audio right there. And you can see when you're getting the tuning errors, I believe that's because it's trying to tune to a frequency that uh, is too far out from uh, my sample rate and so that's to be expected with uh, some of these cheaper RTL devices.
So you can actually see that came on that uh, simulcast system, and that was uh, uh, the Houston Fire Department dispatch with her beautiful robot voice. But um, honestly, even though that was a little bit choppy as we were listening to it, the uh, tonal quality of the voice is better than anything I hear on any of my scanners that uh, that can decode that. It sounds very nasally on the scanners, but uh, coming through uh, OP25 on here, uh, because I believe OP25 actually implements some uh, error correction that a lot of the other guys are not doing. So that really helps um, make that uh, those voices and everything come through a whole lot more clearly than they do on scanners. And so um, that really about does it for getting a OP25 a set up. Injury five laceration. Ambulance nineteen. Okay. Uh, set up and running. I wanted to stop there and let you listen to that voice one more time. But uh, again, we're getting a little bit of choppiness because I think we are very much pushing the limits of uh, this virtual machine's ability to um, hold on to that USB bandwidth and uh, process everything really well. I've got this running on the... Uh, you can hear that right now. The HFD med medical channels, those are actually encrypted. And so it was trying to decode that, and it couldn't. So you were getting the garbly gook. And so what, again, I should do is take that uh, top group ID that just scrolled through and add that to a blacklist.tsv file. Uh, and you would create that just like uh, any of the other TSV files that we created, with the exception that this that the blacklist TSV file only wants a single column of nothing but the decimal top group IDs. Uh, you do not need a header on it. You just go line by line and put in all the top groups, top groups that you don't want to hear or that you know are encrypted. And there you go again. You got some uh, pretty decent decodes going on there. Uh, Constellation again is not as uh, tight as uh, I have actually seen before um, but uh, it's still we're still getting decent audio out of it but uh, you would be able to play around again with your PPM and this uh, fine tuning guy right here uh, one quick note on uh, that I've noticed while running this in the VM is you saw me click through some of these other tabs here and so again, if I look at the spectrum, I can see that I'm sitting on uh, the TX Warren simulcast site right now, which I actually don't pull in that well. If I was to set this on um, Unitrunker on that frequency on this exact setup, uh, I get a health in the teens and to less than 10 most of the time, like barely even one red bar in Unitrunker. But you can see that even with that kind of... Uh, that kind of quality coming through that uh, OP25 is able to pull that out and uh, do what it needs to do with it. But um, so let's just check through some of these other tabs. So again, we've got a view of uh, the modulation that it's looking at. Now, Datascope, when you try to run this on a VM, you can see it popping around like there. It's not fluid at all. And suddenly you see all these data unit timeouts. It's because the uh, VM is trying so hard to render this that there's just nothing left for the uh, radio to be uh, processed. So if I click out of that, immediately the timeouts go away. And I see, oh, getting, getting a much tighter pack now on the Constellation here. And again, if you didn't see me do it earlier, in order to see this view, I'm, I just tick differential instead of direct. And that's what you want to see, is you want to see four fairly tight dots on the screen right there. And then also when there's data coming through, if you check your symbols page, you'll have four straight lines. And then we have a logging window here of the different things that are going on on the different systems. Yeah, so I have my normal uh, my Tomball site 
my favorite that I use on my other videos, and then uh, my simulcast site that's coming out of downtown Houston. And we got some other things here again. Trying to render these screens in the VM really take its toll and don't let a don't let anything run right. So typically I like to stay in the constellation view because I like seeing those packed tight dots. And then you can even actually stop that if you don't want it to uh, spend resources showing you that. And that does seem to help a little bit, but not enough that I don't like to to see that. Okay. Thank you. So again, getting OP25 up and running in a VM is entirely possible. Okay. It's not going to be as great, obviously, okay. as okay. running okay. it natively on your machine. But uh, I think the results here are going to speak for themselves that uh, you can get some really good results and you can get some really good okay. audio out of uh, these P25 systems using this program. And uh, hopefully soon we'll be able to uh, get a little bit more support for a GNU Radio Companion and be able to just drop this module into uh, the Companion and set everything up and uh, set everything up and configure it straight from there without having to go through the command line. But it's not too bad if you uh, know what you're doing. And, uh, one thing I did just notice again, that uh, in my command line down here, you'll see this uh, exponential notation for megahertz. It is typically expecting a full uh, frequency here. Just putting the E6 on the end lets it know that what I just typed in and told it uh, is in uh, megahertz. So that's, that's what that means. Easy enough. All right, and on that, I'll uh, see you next time.